Good morning, and welcome to Vigilant Broadcasting, the station opportunity presents Underneath the Hat with your host, Arthur Cherie Simmons, as she discusses topics to help us all take care of ourselves underneath the hat. Good morning, and welcome to Underneath the Hat, an affiliate of Vigilant Broadcasting and the Talk Radio and TV Network, LLP. My name is Cherie Simmons. It's a bittersweet but good occasion today because this will be the last episode for the spring summer We of Underneath the Hat. We're going to pick back up in September or October. So I want to make sure that we did something fun. So we're actually going to discuss, have a live book discussion of my book, Underneath the Hat. So if you're out there on Facebook, Listening in, you can go to Talk Radio TV Network, LLP, and listen to us live. If you want to call in because you read my book underneath the hat or you have some questions, call in at 319-527-2634. Again, 319-527-2634. I wanted to do this last episode, this session, because this is how this radio show started. It started with the beginning of this book. I wrote this book, oh, four or five years ago after going through my separation and divorce from my first husband. And it really was a for me to deal with all of the things that I went through throughout all of the infidelities and secrets that were revealed. So writing this book underneath the hat really helped me to be able to push through. And after writing the book, which we're going to dive into a little bit later, I was able to come up with all of these different um, topics that I dealt with. And writing this book, I felt that I was by myself, that no one else was going through the things that I was going through. And so this was my opportunity to not only help myself, but also ended up helping others. And the title underneath the hat deals with Amanda Jane, the main character's role as a first lady, and how hats were very instrumental in the role of a first lady in a church. And also it talks about how we all wear different hats, whether we're a parent, a child, an aunt, an uncle, a coworker, an entrepreneur, we all wear different hats. And sometimes we hide ourselves underneath our hat. There are things about us that people don't know things that we keep hidden that ultimately could be helpful to someone else. I always say that my testimony can be a breakthrough for someone else. So this is how the book started. And from there, God showed me you need to tap into those who may not want to pick up your book, but those that are live on Facebook, side of the YouTube channel called Underneath the Hat Web Series, where I take some of the same topics I mentioned in the book and bring real people in that are going through some of those things, have overcome some of those challenges, are going through them now, and we have a real discussion. And from there came the opportunity to work with Kimberly McLemore, and she had this radio show, which allowed for me to be able to branch out and have this radio show underneath the hat. And we've been able to deal with some of the same topics that I've dealt with in the book, that I cover in the book, and that I also dealt with on the web series. So I'm just excited for being able to have come in front of you all every Saturday for the past three months and been transparent 
and authentic and been able to bring people onto this show who have been able to share their truth and ultimately help other people. So let's dive right on in. Underneath the hat, based on a true story. So the first chapter deals with dating. I discussed how Amanda Jane met Campbell and how they went through all of the phases of dating from talking on the phone late at night to falling asleep on the phone to um, going on dates, sneaking out the house, uh, doing things that they shouldn't have been doing, but we've all been guilty of doing as teenagers. And it basically sets the tone of how their love story began. And at the end of each chapter, I make sure that I include the purpose and the lesson that Amanda Jane learned. I've seen so often in books that we see what the character goes through, but we never really know what they learn from it. And I'm a true believer in that if you don't learn the lesson, you'll end up making the same mistake. And it used to scare me, only being 36, well, I'll be 37 on July 3rd. So only being 36, it used to scare me because I felt like my life was moving so fast that I was allowing me to partake in so many things and do so many things so quickly. And I, it scared me, and I used to think that I would die sooner because stuff was happening so fast. And one day God told me, he was like, no, it's because you reflect and you listen to what I'm telling you to do. So as an educator, I always tell my students, if you do it right the first time, you won't have to do it again. And so I pride myself on if I make a mistake, trying my best not to make one. But when I make a mistake, making sure that I reflect on what I did wrong, what I could have done differently so that I don't have to do it again. And so I was very purposeful in making sure that at the end of each chapter, I put the purpose and the lesson that Amanda Jane learned within each area of her life so that not only she could see the growth in herself, but also the audience could see the growth in Amanda Jane. From dating, I also speak about her love foundation. We all have a love foundation. Our love foundation is the relationship that we saw that leads us to the relationships that we ultimately become a part of. And Amanda Jane's love foundation was her mom and her dad. And she realized going through therapy that a lot of the things that she accepted from her husband Campbell were things that were seen by her dad. So either consciously or subconsciously, we do things and allow things and accept things from our partners in our relationships, whether they're business relationships, sexual relationships, work relationships. There are things, characteristics, traits that we accept from other people because of the love foundation that was set for us as kids. And we hear the saying that, oh, I married my father, or that a girl looks for her husband to be like her dad, or a man looks for her wife, his wife to be like his mom. That's because they're our love foundation. So a lot of the things that we allow, we tolerate, we think are acceptable is based on what our parents showed us. And even though they tell us all the time, do as I say, not as I do, we all are sponges. Even when we date, we see a person before they open their mouth. So as much as we want to say, do as I say, not as I do, we ultimately judge with our eyes first before we know anything else. So a lot of the things that Amanda Jane accepted from Campbell were because of the love foundation that she had, that had been set for her by her dad. And the way she reacted 
to the things that Carol did were set by the things she saw her mom accept. And so in Chapter 1, Dating, she deals with those things and is able to notice them and identify them and realize them, which ultimately helps her to heal towards the end of all of the things that she learns. From chapter one, we have chapter two, which talks about marriage. It deals with how they came to be married, the things that led up to them being married, and then the things that they dealt with while they were at the beginning of their marriage from her amanda jane starting her job as an educator going from living in a dorm room to now living in a two-bedroom apartment and having a husband three months later after graduating with her bachelor's degree and i speak in the book about how i was taught how to be amanda jane was taught how to be a teacher she was not taught how to be a wife and that is true for a lot of us. We spend most of our time paying these student loans, getting these degrees, and we're not, especially now with this new generation, taught how to be wise. Because again, at Love Foundation, you can't do what you don't see, which is a quote that I love by Marion Wright Edelman. You can't be what you don't see. What I saw my mom do, what Amanda Jane saw her mom do, was get up, go to work every morning. What a lot of girls see their moms do is based on what they do. And so when we get into these marriages that we weren't trained and prepared to be in, a lot of them end in divorce. That's why our divorce rate is 51%, because a lot of us were not prepared to be wise, prepared to be husbands. Even more so with the man because you don't have as many men in the household. So it's hard for a man to know what a husband is supposed to do, what a husband is supposed to look like. And with Amanda Jane, her father took care of the house, made sure the clothes were ready for school, homework was done, dinner was on the table. She knew he worked, but she didn't see him go because he went after everything was done after she was asleep. But she saw her mom get up every morning, put on her stockings with her white socks and her gym shoes and have her heels in her purse as she went downtown to work at the law firm. She saw work ethic from her mom. So when she became a wife, that's what she thought she had to do. She thought it was the man's responsibility to cook and clean and take care of the kids because that's what she saw. Whereas with Campbell, he saw the traditional way, his grandmother being at home, his grandfather working nine to five, coming home and dinner was on the table, the family sitting at the table and eating together. That's what he saw. And so a lot of the things, issues that they had were because of the fact that they came from two totally different paths, two totally different ideas of what marriage was, but they were so young at 23 and 25 that they didn't have a conversation about what their path would look like. They were only going based on what they saw and what they felt should be instead of having an adult conversation about what their marriage would look like. So Chapter 2 deals with the things that they had to deal with in their seven-year marriage at this time. And then at the end, you learn the purpose and the lessons that Amanda Jane learned of going through that and how some of the red flags that she noticed in her marriage will ultimately play a part in the things that were revealed in the next couple of chapters. From Chapter 2, we have 3, which deals with the separation. What led to the separation? Why did the Lord ultimately, because it was all him. Uh, Amanda Jane had no idea what was coming down the pike, but God set it up for her to be able to, I always say he picked Amanda Jane up and out the nest of comfort and dropped her because one of the biggest lessons that Amanda Jane had to learn was that God had her the whole time. She was so in love, so infatuated with Camo. No one else mattered 
she knew who God was. She knew of him, but she did not know him. Like we know, we have a, so God was like an associate to her. Let's put it that way. God was an associate. He wasn't a friend. He wasn't the ride or die in Amanda Jane's life. Campbell was her ride or die. God was an associate. And all of us who are, have relationships with Jesus know that he's a jealous God. And there were some things that he had in store for her that he could not get her to see because she was so blinded by her ride or die and not by the ultimate creator and the ultimate provider. And so he had to remove her from that situation. She had no idea what was coming down the pipe. She had no idea that he was actually saving her life by taking her away from everything that felt comfortable to her, taking her away from the one person that she felt loved her the most, taking her away from the person who gave her and provided everything that she felt she needed and that she felt she had. She had no idea that the hurt that she was feeling of being separated from Campbell was ultimately going to give her her purpose in life. And so chapter 3 discusses the separation, what led to it, the emotions that she felt, um, her figuring out who she was and having a better relationship with God and getting closer to him because now her associate became her main source. And she began to realize that he was all she had in the first place, that there would have been no Campbell without him. And so this chapter is very poignant because a lot of times in our lives, we all go through storms, trials, and tribulations, yet we get so many blessings in the midst of it, and it confuses us. Amanda Jane was very confused (laughs) in chapter 3 because she could not, she didn't understand she knew that there was a problem in the marriage. She knew that something had to be done, and she thought that this separation would be a way for her to get herself together, to make some changes within her because she was made to feel by Campbell that she was the problem. What she wasn't doing was the cause, when ultimately it was a much bigger picture. And so because she was the type of person that wanted to make sure everybody was taken care of, everybody felt safe, everybody liked her, she was, she, I considered her a doormat at this time in her life. It was all about other people being okay and not about making sure that she was okay. And so this chapter was definitely a revelation for her. But in the midst of all of that, she was being blessed and upgraded and her territory was enlarged because uh, God was preparing her to be in a better place. And it's amazing how you can go through some of the hardest times in your life, but good things still happen to you. And we don't really pay attention to the good because we harp so much on the bad. But in Chapter 3, great things were happening for her. In the midst of her separation, she became an assistant principal at 30 years old. I'm real big with numbers, and so 30 is 3 and 0. 3 plus 0 equals 3. 3 represents the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. So at 30 is when her life changed. She became an assistant principal, and then three, six days later, she was being told that her husband wanted separation. And then 21 days from there, from the day she was told two plus one is three, Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, she moved out. So all these threes were popping up around her. And God placed her in an even better place, even bigger place, with a view of the lake and a view of Navy Pier. And, and here she is going from a five-figure salary to a six-figure salary. And, and Everything around her was going in the direction that it should have gone, but the only thing that was missing was Campbell. And this is because sometimes God will allow for you to be put by yourself. Sometimes he has to remove us from all the noise and the chaos because we, a lot of us can't function in chaos. 
it reminds me of the um, poem, the book that Tupac read called A Rose, Rose from Concrete, which ultimately came from a poem that he wrote. And a lot of us can, Amanda Jane is the example of a rose growing from concrete. She's beautiful. She was able to successfully get everything that she needed from this concrete. No one really understands why. No one really understands how she did it. But here we have a rose that grew from concrete. All the negative things, the hard stuff she had to go through that would have crumbled and, and killed other people that have crumbled and hurt other people. Other people didn't survive the things that Amanda Jane went through. But here she is, a rose growing out of concrete. And even she doesn't understand why. She has no idea that this separation was really a blessing in disguise. And so at the end of Chapter 3, she learns, she understands part of why God moved in the way that he did. And things are starting to be revealed to her. God had to remove her from the situation, remove her from the person she was idolizing, which was Campbell, in order to get her by herself so that he could clear her mind and allow for her to see what it was ultimately that he was doing. And to remind her, I've been here the whole time. It reminds me of that poem uh, where it described footprints in the sand. And it started out being two sets of footprints when everything was going great in this person's life. But then all of a sudden they only noticed one pair of footprints. And so the woman asked God, why was there only one pair? Where were you when I needed you? Why weren't you there when all of the when all the hard times got bad? And God told her, you see one pair of footprints because I was carrying you. So God sometimes puts us in situations where he knows we can't handle it. But he knows that we have to go through the storm in order to be able to deal with what's coming after it. And so he's not going to prevent us from going through it. But sometimes he carries us. So we still have to deal with the storm, even though we're shivering in his hands and our eyes are covered because of the thunder and the lightning. We still have to go through these bad things in order to make us stronger. So the next time a storm comes, it won't be one pair of footprints. It can be two where he'll always be walking by our side or next to us or behind us, holding us up when necessary. But sometimes God carries us through things. Not saying we never have to go through it, but he carries us through it so that we can handle something bigger that's coming. So don't get upset. Don't get worried. Don't throw in the towel and give in because we're afraid and don't think we can handle what he's going through or what he's putting us through, because I am a living testimony of that the storm does not last always, and that he will be there for you the whole time. And so that is what Chapter 3 talks about, how Amanda Jane becomes closer to God, and God starts to reveal to her why it is that she's separated, which is ultimately he's carrying her into Chapter 4 which is when the storm really comes. She has to go through it, but she's not by herself. And she's not going to be strong enough to walk through it, so he's carrying her through. So we're going to take a break, and I'm going to check Facebook to see if anyone may have left some questions that they have about the book. But when we come back, we're going to discuss why was God carrying her now instead of her walking on her own when we visit Chapter 4, The Affair. This is Underneath the Hat, and we'll be right back. Welcome back to Underneath the Hat with your host, Arthur Cherie Simmons. Hi, welcome back. This is Cherie Simmons, and this is Underneath the Hat, an affiliate of Vigilant Broadcasting and the Talk Radio and TV Network, LLP. If you're on Facebook, I've started a watch party on my page, Cherie Simmons, or you can go to the radio station's page, Talk Radio TV Network LLP, and tune in. Type us a question, comment, for those of you that have read my book already. Or if you want to call in and discuss, 
Call us at 319-527-2634. Today is a bittersweet day, but I'm excited at the same time because this will be the last episode for the spring summer, and I'll pick back up with Underneath the Hat and the fall, and I'll explain to you why at the end of the show. But we're going to close out this session with a book discussion on my book that I've written called Underneath the Hat. I want to thank those who have actually purchased the book, either from me personally or through Amazon. Thank you so much for your support. I love hearing all of the stories and the uh, the experiences people have had with the book, their reaction to the book. I've heard so many people say, that they finished the book in one day because it is definitely a page turner and they did not want to stop until they made it to the end. I've also heard people say that they had to throw the book across the room. They've had to put the book down. And someone asked me a couple of days ago in an interview, um, why did I purposefully write the book the way that I did? We know it's Amanda Jamer. We don't really know. No, she said we didn't realize who the person was telling the story until the end. And I let her know that the reason for that is because Amanda Jane didn't know who Amanda Jane was until the end. And so she was starting to figure out who was underneath the hat at the same time that the audience was. So I also let her know that... I wanted it to feel, she said it felt as if she was sitting there having a conversation with the author, and I wanted it to feel that way. My process of writing this book underneath the hat was I voice recorded everything. So as things were happening to me, to Amanda Jane, I recorded it on my phone so that as you read it, it's as if I'm having a real conversation with you. And so I wanted to make sure that the voice was was heard, understood, and kept throughout the entire editing process because I wanted to make sure that when people read the book, they felt as if Amanda Jane was talking to them, that they could feel as if it was them on the roller coaster with Amanda Jane, them in the driver's seat when she almost hit Campbell in his parking lot. I wanted them to feel like they were there in the moment, which is why so many people said, it was hard for them to put it down because they felt emotionally like they were on the same ride with Amanda Jane. So if you have not gotten a book yet, make sure you go to Amazon.com or wherever books are sold. Type in underneath the hat. It's also available on your Kindle. So when we left off, I was doing a synopsis of each chapter and we've already done the first three chapters. Now we're on chapter four, The Affair. This chapter is probably the juiciest one out of the whole book because it explains why Amanda Jane ended up being separated. She didn't even know the ultimate purpose for her separation. She just knew that Campbell came to her three days after her birth, 30th birthday and said he wanted to have a separation. And then 21 days after that, she was moving out. So she had no clue as to why any of this was happening. But a trip to Las Vegas for Christmas, December 2013, revealed to her why she was separated. December 2012, I'm sorry, why she ultimately had to separate from her husband Campbell because she found out from a reliable source that her husband was having an affair. And before we left on break, I was telling you all about the poem where you see footprints in the sand and how the woman wants to know why it started out with two sets of footprints And then it went to one, and she thought that God had left her when ultimately God let her know he was carrying her. This is the chapter of the book where God is carrying Amanda Jane because Amanda Jane totally loses 
her mind. Like emotionally, Amanda Jane is crushed. She can't stand. It's just so much going on. And I realized that the reason why God waited six months from the time that she moved out to the time that she found out is because he had to prepare her. He Sometimes God allows for us to go through things. We all are going to have those bombshell moments, those TKO moments, I call them in the book, where you just have to get knocked out because you're not listening. We're hard-headed. I'm hard-headed. I'm one of those people like, mm, mm, I always want to give people the benefit of the doubt. And God is sitting here telling me, no, leave me alone now. This ain't right. No, not that one. Stop playing. You don't need to be friends with them. Well, you know, I, it's, I'm one of those. So I always got in trouble as a kid, got whoopings because my grandmother was there, hard head, make the south behind. And I was one of those hard-headed kids, which, like I talked about your love foundation at the beginning of the show, that foundation came up with me, and so I'm slowly weaning off of being hard-headed for a lot of things. But I was hard-headed. And so Amanda Jane was hard-headed. And because she was, and she didn't see the red, didn't pay attention to the red flags that were there, that she didn't realize were red flags until she reflected on it, she had to be TKO'd, totally knocked out. And God knew that because of the stronghold that Campbell had on Amanda Jane, he could not allow for her to find out about this affair while she was living in the house. She, he had to move her. Sometimes God has to remove you from a situation because he knows how it may affect you or you will react. And I couldn't be in prison walking in my purpose. So he had to remove me and center me on him so that I could realize that if he carried me through a separation, he could carry me through this. And so a lot of situations we deal with, we wonder why did he remove him, us from the situation before all of the mess hit the fan? Because he has to mentally focus us and prepare us for what's about to happen. So me moving out in July and finding out in December what had happened was preparing me. Yeah, he picked me up out that nest and I felt like he dropped me. But he scooped up under me and picked me up. So I was still floating, but I didn't feel out of control. So him moving me and separating me from camera before everything came out was a preparation for me. I thought it was hurtful, but it was a preparation. And so um, when she found out about the affair from an, a very reliable but Interesting source. I don't want to give all the book. You got to read who tells her this and how they ultimately play a part at the, as more stuff came out. She knew it was a reliable source because of who it was. But the fact that it happened two days before Christmas, she's in Las Vegas, Nevada, thousands of miles away from her estranged husband. And to find out that he has had an affair with someone that they went to church with. So I started at the beginning of the story telling you that the hat, underneath the hat had a twofold purpose. It represents the uniform of a first lady of a church, which Amanda Jane ultimately became. And it also represents how we all wear different hats and sometimes we don't give, share all that we are underneath it. And so Amanda Jane was was peeling back the layers trying to figure out who she was and ultimately shedding a lot of layers too. And so for her to find out that her husband, her pastor, her confidant, her best friend, was having an affair with someone in the church that they attended hurt her. And again, God had to remove her from the situation. Not only could he not tell her this when she was living in the home, but he had to remove her from out the state 
when she found out. <laughs> like, a lot of people sleep on Amanda Jane, have slept on Amanda Jane, because Amanda Jane is very quiet. She's very reserved. She keeps to herself. She does, she's an introvert. She doesn't deal with, she doesn't like chaos. So a lot of people sleep on Amanda Jane and take her kindness for weakness. But God knows that this woman is great. Like God knows everything about the children that follow him. He knows his children. He knows what we can handle. He knows what's going to make us snap. And he prepares us so that we don't ultimately have to go down that road. Now, he always gives us the gift of choice. Everybody has a choice. What you do with your choice is up to you and ultimately determines your consequences. But he will not put you in situations at times where you have to choose something that will cause you to harm yourself. But he will put you in situations where you have to show whether you believe in him or man. So God had to separate me not only from the household, but also from the city, the state, before this TKO was dropped. Because Amanda Jane had to go through this TKO of finding out about the affair. She ultimately had to find out anyway. What's done in the dark will come to the light. But the way that God handled it depends on the person. And so he knew that she was closer to him, but he still had some work to do. So he removed her from the state so that she could still have two or three days in Vegas to, again, there's that going through but still being blessed. Amanda Jane had planned out a whole week long of activity she was going to do because it was the first Christmas she spent by herself without Campbell. So she kept herself busy. So thank God for that because she found out about the affair in the middle of her trip. So she still had two or three days left. And in those two or three days, God allowed for her to distract herself with entertainment, but also to give her time to reflect and investigate what was going on, what was told to her. And so when she came back to Chicago, she was able to handle it appropriately. And that's exactly what she did. So after finding out about the affair and going to Facebook, she wasn't on Instagram back then, but Facebook, Lord Jesus, was enough for the stuff that she learned about. She was able to find out um, things that had been written, things that had been done, money that had been spent from their joint accounts. God was preparing her. God was showing her bits and pieces of things that she needed to see in order for her to understand that your purpose is not to be underneath the hat as the first lady. I have a bigger purpose for you. And so I have to unveil all of these things to you, pull these layers back so that you can ultimately know what your purpose is. And that's exactly what happened in Chapter 4, The Affair. I will tell you this, if when you get the book, buckle your seatbelt. That is the chapter where God is carrying Amanda Jane, and he carries her for the following chapter as well, which is chapter 5, Snap, Crack, and Pop. Now, as I said before, because Amanda Jane is very quiet and keeps to herself and doesn't do all the rah-rah, as they call, people take her kindness for weakness. But everybody has a moment where they snap crackle, and pop. I mean, they have a whole show called Snapped on TV, which chronicles the lives of women who are behind bars because they had a snap, crackle, pop moment, and they chose the wrong thing to do. Well, Amanda Jane had some moments. They weren't as extreme as the women on these shows, but they were extreme for her. From, as I stated earlier, almost hitting Campbell in, in the parking lot, backing into him playfully, but she could have been arrested. Uh, backing into him in the, <laughs> in the parking lot when she was trying to scare him by hitting his precious car. 
or when she would drive by the house in the middle of the night after finding pictures of him and women on Facebook or messages between he and the women that he were women, plural, with an E, not an A, of the women she had found out about outside of the one she found out about in Vegas. She would go and leave pictures and messages and copies of things on his uh, window seal uh, of his car, on the windshield of his car. She just had a lot of, um, yeah, interesting moments where she would just get up in the middle of the night and think about something and drive all the way from one side of town to the next in order to deal with this anger. We we learned that it, when you're grieving something, Amanda Jane was grieving the loss of her relationship. Her marriage was dying. And everybody handles grief differently. But a phase of grief is anger. Like you have your shock. She was shocked that it happened. And then you have your hurt. Then you have your anger. And this was the anger phase of the grief of the loss of her marriage. And so even in the midst of her snap, crackle, pop phase, she still had a purpose and a lesson. She was able to self-reflect and realize that there were some things that she could have done differently, some things that could have happened differently if she had chosen another path. And all of this self-reflection on her purpose and her lesson made her a stronger person for Chapter 6, No Self-Esteem. Now, Amanda Jane thought that she had high self-esteem because when we consider someone with low self-esteem, somebody that's hurting themselves, always talking about themselves, downing themselves, we've seen them. People on these talk shows that come on here and they're crying and they want to commit suicide. Well, Amanda Jane had two bouts where she tried to commit suicide. One when she was a teenager and one during this whole situation. But through self-reflection, Amanda Jane realized that she had low self-esteem. Why? Because she was able to allow a man to come in and make her feel a certain way about herself. That's low self-esteem. When someone can come into your life, get into your ear, get into your heart, get into your mind, and make you feel differently about yourself, that's low self-esteem. When you need someone to validate you, that's low self-esteem. So after realizing what it was, she realized that she did have low self-esteem. And she also realized that she was in an abusive relationship. Abusive relationships was actually one of the topics that we discussed on this very radio show. And that a lot of times we only identify abusive relationships as physical. But you have emotional abuse. You have financial abuse, you have spiritual abuse, mental abuse, and Amanda Jane was in a mental was in a mental and emotional abusive relationship. He never put his hands on her except one, which is discussed in the book. But he never put his hands on her in all of the years that they had been together. So she felt that she was great. Based on that scale, they were fine. But when she started to replay all the things that she had been through, he was emotionally and mentally abusive to her. He would play the game of being in a store and saying, I bet you if I walk up to her, she'll tell me I'm cute. Or uh, making her feel like she's less than. She went through all that with Campbell, but she didn't find anything wrong with it because she wasn't getting hit, which she had seen other women in her life go through. There's that love foundation. He's cool compared to the other men I've seen, other relationships I've seen. He was good. He never put his hands on me. I didn't know he was stepping out until the Lord revealed it, which is what Amanda Jane saw as she was growing up in other relationships. So compared to what she saw, 
she was good. Her relationship was perfect, but really it wasn't. And so she had to realize that she had low self-esteem and the lessons that she learned from that. And from there came Chapter 7, the divorce. Finally going through the up and down roller coaster trying to get the divorce. She really didn't want it. But she had reached a point when she had moved from her, she was getting ready to move from her condo to a house, and the stuff kept happening. More stuff kept coming up, and Campbell kept lying. Now, for those authors out there, we know that we pick characters' names, settings, clothes that they wear, background, based on the characteristics of the person. And I had to pick a name that represented Campbell. And if you look up Campbell in the dictionary or in a name book, it means double-tongued. Campbell means double-tongued because he lied. He was a liar, which was a trait that she got from her dad. It was acceptable for her, for him to lie, because she saw her dad do it, and she still loves him anyway. Read the book. I'm telling you, it's a lot of these stuff up in here, and we've discussed father-daughter relationships on this show, on my web series. We've discussed mother-daughter relationships, some of the things she accepted from Campbell, she accepted from him because of what she saw her mom accept from her stepdad and her dad. The things that she accepted from Campbell as a man is because of the stuff she accepted from her dad. So Campbell has the name he does. He had one family over here and his wife. He had multiple things going on. He was double-tongued. So that's where his name comes from. And so going through the divorce in Chapter 7 and finally getting to the point where it happened and her going by herself because he never showed up. He was served papers. He never showed up. They had an argument the day that she went to court. He wasn't there. And so she had to learn that purpose and that lesson. And then with Chapter 8, hate on me, dealing with the people who sat in her face, knowing what was going on and never said anything. She had to come to grips with that and those people, removing people from her circle that she thought was in her circle. And the lesson she learned from that, to be careful to watch and pray. Watch and pray. Everybody that's in your circle is not there to see you shine. Some of them are there to get a front row seat to see you fall. And there's a lot of people out there today who have haters. I love haters now because I know what they represent. That means I'm doing something so good that it's causing you to be frazzled. And I have to learn who those haters are and to remove them from my circle. And I have had to remove some haters, both voluntarily and involuntarily, all because of me reflecting on my life. Chapter 9 deals with my future where I basically put my heart on Amanda Jane put her heart on paper and told what it was that she wanted because she wasn't explicit in what she wanted with Campbell because she was 23 when she got married. They were 16 when they met. So she didn't know what she was wanted and who she was. And now that she's starting to understand who she is underneath her hat, in Chapter 9 and Chapter 10, A Prayer for Amanda Jane, she tells people what she wants. She tells God what she wants. She thanks God for all that he's done. And chapter 11, (laughs) that's another doozy. It's called WTF, and we all know what that means. What the F? Well, another bomb was dropped after her divorce. After she had been divorced for about eight months, another bomb was dropped about somebody who was close to her circle who she was about to leave everything to in her will. Right before she signed it, days before she got it notarized, the Lord was like, not today. And allowed for a ram in the bush. I call him the broken clock. Read chapter 11, you'll see why. He's called the broken clock. The Lord revealed the decoy. That's her name in the book, the decoy. And we know that a decoy is somebody who pretends to be one thing, but is fake and false and fraud, Jalent. 
So the decoy was revealed, and decoy is connected to the person who told me about the affair at the beginning. You got to read the book. It's, it's, it's like a soap opera, which I love, soap operas. And so chapter 11 is WTF, and then I closed out the chapter with chapter 12, Breathe, which is where Amanda Jane meets Aaron, the love of her life and how you can see the connection to all of the things that she had learned about her love foundation and fixing and mending those relationships were important to her being able to meet Aaron and respect Aaron and understand Aaron and care for Aaron the way he deserved to be. And then Aaron coming in when he did to be able to be a strong tower for her in the midst of all of the foolishness that she had gone through. So I wanted to end this book letting those women out there know who have gone through similar situations that it's not too late. You can still find love. You can still find love. You would think that Amanda Jane, and she didn't, would never want to be involved in another relationship after all that Campbell put her through. But she's still standing, and she's still here. And how do I know? That Amanda Jane is still here because I am Amanda Jane. This is based on my life story, Cherie Simmons. The things in this book are based on my true story. And I wanted to be able to share this with everyone to let them know that little old me, little quiet Cherie, went through these things yet I'm still standing. I'm an educator of 14 years. I'm an entrepreneur, the founder of Young Ladies at All Times, a mentoring program where I've helped 24 girls in two years to carry themselves as young ladies at all times. I'm the author of the book we discussed today, Underneath the Hat. I'm the host of a TV show. I'm sorry, radio. Oh, maybe I'm speaking something to drink since Jesus. I'm the host of a radio show, Underneath the Hat, which we're listening to, you're tuning into right now. Who would have thought? And there are so many things that are underneath this hat that have not even come to fruition yet, things I haven't told people about that I'm still keeping my eye on but I don't want to give too much. That's a plug to the cover of the book. So I just want to make sure that everyone out there gets this book, and it's not about sales for me. I'm not, I'm not the type of person where I, I get excited by flash and all that stuff because going through what I went through in this book lets me know that everything that shimmers is not gold. Campbell was a prime example of that. He cared so much about the facade, what everything looked like on the outside, and the inside, the foundation was cracked. So I don't get hyped up and excited about everything that flashes because then I met Aaron, who was my husband, Vince, and Vince was the total opposite of Aaron. It wasn't all about flash with him, but his heart was as pure as gold. So we have to get out of this whole mindset of what it looks like, what we see. Because sometimes people are wearing hats that make you think that they are one person and they're somebody totally different. But it's not until you get underneath the hat that you really reveal who that person truly is. And so I hope that in these three months that I have revealed more to you about who I am as Sheree and also that I have helped you to understand who you are underneath the hat with the different topics that we discussed from friendship to forgiveness, mother-daughter relationships, infertility, mental health, dating in the 21st century, religion versus relationships, love and marriage, um, women on the move, living my best life, finances, and now my book, Underneath the Hat, 
those are all the topics that we've covered in these short three months. And I am so thankful to all of my guests who have called in, taken time out of their Saturdays to be able to come and share their testimonies with you all, which have ultimately been a breakthrough for somebody listening. I know if I touched one person by sharing my story and bringing people on this radio, on these airwaves, they can share their story. If one person was helped, I've done what I'm supposed to do. That's why I don't care about book sales. I don't care about making money. I'm fine. This is more about my testimony being used to be a breakthrough for somebody else. That's my purpose. I had to go through pain in order to find my purpose. And it's not about the dollar sign for me. I am here to help shed life, light on the things that we don't want to talk about, that we hide underneath our hat, that we sweep up under the rug, that's ultimately hurting us and helping to build damaging foundations. And I'm here to help you to know that you can heal from them so that you can live your best life and be your best person underneath the hat. I want to thank you all so much for supporting me in these three months. Thank you to Kimberly McLemore and Ashley Little with the radio show. And thank you to Justin Walker, my engineer, and to his wife, Danielle, for being with me these three months. And I am going to take a break because, as you know, I'm very transparent. Um, those that heard my infertility story a couple of weeks ago know that I deal with infertility. So this summer I'm going to be having another myoectomy surgery, which removes more fibroids so that I, my husband and I can start another IVF cycle. So sometime next week or the following week, I'll be under the knife for the fifth time trying to get rid of these fibroids so that God can bless us with the child. So I want to thank everybody for your prayers. Continue to send them up for me, and I will definitely be back this fall. Again, thank you all so much. And until October or September, my name is Cherie Simmons, and remember to take care of yourself underneath the hat. Thank you for tuning in to Underneath the Hat's radio show. We will see you here again next Saturday at 10 o'clock a.m. Central Time. Follow Cherie on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at Underneath the Hat, and visit her website, CherieSimmons.com. Always remember to take care of yourself underneath the hat. See you next week.